Okay, the next thing we're going to have a look at is we're going to just do a review and it should most definitely be a review. And we're looking at measures of location and spread. So remember with data, there are two different types of ways that we want to measure it. So location, so the things that we'd be looking at with location is where the average of the data sits and where the data is located according to that average. So the things we're looking at for location is the average, which is the mean. Remember that's represented by X bar or an X with the line across the top. Now the mean is represented by the sum of the scores, sum of all the scores, divided by the number of scores. So if I wanted to find the average temperature, this, the average maximum temperature this week, I would add all the maximum temperatures for the week up and divide by seven if there were seven days that I was representing in this week. If I used the summation, then I would be looking for the sum. Remember that's the sigma or the sum symbol. It means to sum or add up. So I would be looking for the sum of the x's because x stands for the scores out of the total number. In other words, the sum of, if I have more than one of those frequencies, the sum of the frequency times the score. So for example, I could have two and it might appear three times. So instead of adding up two, then two, then two, I would add up two lots of three and that would tell me I'm just adding six in one go. So the sum of the FX column divided by the sum of the frequency column. So in other words, the sum of the scores divided by the number of scores. Remember, frequency just tells you how many. Okay, the next thing we would look at with location is we would look at median. So median is the score that occurs in the middle. Now, how do we find that? Well, it's really important that we first put our scores in order. And we can either very simply cross them off from either end or we can do a calculation. The easiest way that I've found to do it is to say how many scores do you have, so n being the number of scores. Add 1 to the number of scores you have and divide by 2. And this will tell you the score that is the median. So for example, if I had 10 scores, So 10 plus 1 is 11, divided by 2 is 5.5. So it's the 5 and a half one that's in order, the 5.5th one that's in order from lowest to highest that would become my median. So I need to count from the first one along and then that one becomes my median. Now remember what we have done in the past. Let's say, for example, I have five scores, then my median, five plus one is six, six divided by two is three, it's the one, two, third one in order, and I'm going to put a line through the one that is the median. Now if the median occurs in between them, so for example I have two, three, four and five, that's four scores, four plus one is five, five divided by two is two and a half, so it's the, between the second and the third, one, 2, that's the second score, there's the third score, the median occurs in the middle. Now if it occurs in the middle, you just need to add the two scores up and divide by 2. So 3 plus 4 is 7, divide by 2 tells you that the median is going to be 3.5. This method of adding 1 to the number of scores just tells you the nth score, so what order the score is in. To actually find it, you need to look to the natural numbers. And if it's in between, you need to use the actual scores to add together and divide by two to find the one that's halfway. Now these are the two measures of location that we use for numerical data. But if we're looking at categorical data, the only one that we can use is the mode. Now this is the score that occurs the most. And remember some some sets of data 
uh, can be bimodal, so it can have more than one mode, or it can be multimodal, where it has more than one. More than two, perhaps. So it doesn't even have to have one at all. So there could be no mode. So it's just simply the score that occurs the most. Okay, so if we have a look now at measures of spread. So the things that we use to determine measures of spread. Measures of spread is how far spread the data is from start to finish, away from the mean, or in the middle half of the data. So the things that we use are range, which is highest minus lowest. That's the most simplest way we can say, okay, the scores started at 27, they ended at 65. So the range would be 65 minus 27. So our scores are over a range of whatever that happens to be. The next one we can have a look at is the interquartile range, IQR. And if we were thinking about a box and whisker plot where this is our two ends, and here's my data sitting in the middle, this is my lowest term, this is my highest term, so lowest, highest, this would be my quartile 1. This, of course, is my median, or what we would call quartile 2. This is my quartile 3, and up the top to my highest. Now, this is where my box would sit around my data, and this is where we look at the middle 50% quartile in quarters. So there's 25% of data sitting there, 25% sitting here, 25% sitting in that gap and 25% sitting in here. So the interquartile range looks at the range of the middle 50%. So in order to find that range, it's the range of the data from this point to this point here. So I need to know my quartile 3 and I'm simply going to take away my quartile 1. Now remember to get my quartiles, all I need to do with my data is put it in order. I need to then find the median and then I'm going to just find the median of each half and that gives me my quartile 1 and, oh, yes, and my quartile 3. So find the median of each half. The other way I can measure my spread is by looking at my standard deviation. Now, standard deviation is represented by the little sigma, and there's two. There's sigma n or sigma n minus 1. So this is when we are looking at the population. So if I said I wanted the standard deviation of my golf game on the last round, then I would be looking at every single hole, the score that I got on every single hole on the golf course. If I was looking at the standard deviation of a sample or a select group, of, of answers. So if I looked, say, the standard deviation of the entire general maths course, I'd be using this one. If I looked at the standard, the standard deviation of our class, I would be using this one because it's looking at a sample. Remember, the standard deviation tells us the deviation away from the mean. So how far from that middle score, if here's my middle score, if here's my X bar, how far in general, standard, that's why we call it standard, have I deviated away? So what percentage of my scores lie within one standard deviation, two and three standard deviations away from my mean, taking me all the way up to the top and all the way down to the bottom, to my highest and to my lowest. Okay. You probably have enough information now to start off exercise uh, 402, but you'll only be able to do a couple of questions because the next video we'll do using your calculator. So you should be able to get yourself from question 1 to question 4 without any more information.